exchange. And my name is Tilly Elvram, and I am an administrator here at Parent Support for Online Learning. And we are really glad that you're here today. Uh, for many of you, this is, you're finishing up your first or second week of remote learning and back to school. And uh, we've seen a lot of parents here in the group this week. Uh, some are a little stressed and overwhelmed trying to figure it all out. And so we're here today to provide some resources and some assistance for you in a subject that I think uh, a lot of parents struggle with, and that is math education. And especially if you've got a middle schooler or a high schooler and you're dealing with pre-algebra or algebra, um, I know that th those were days and long nights of homework in our household. So I always appreciated any help that I could get. And I'm glad that today we have somebody here who has spent a lot of time thinking about um, algebra and how we can make it more accessible to our students and how to support parents and supporting their kids in learning at home. And, and today we have Lewis Hall with us and he is with Elevated Math. And Elevated Math is uh, a math program he's put together, I think, what, 173 award-winning videos covering pre-algebra and algebra topics, and, and also some career uh, uh, videos that kind of put together math in the real, real world. And so welcome, Lewis. I'm really glad that you're here today. You're, you're joining us from California. And uh, just tell us a little bit, you've had an amazing career. And I think it would benefit folks to know who's behind these videos and, and how Elevated Math came to be. So tell us a little bit about uh, your career and uh, what made you kind of jump into making educational videos. Well, uh, first, thank you for having me. Um, it's uh, having been secluded here in, in self quarantine for so many months. It's nice to get out sometimes like this. <laughs> um, but um, my background, boy, I starts. You know, I went to UCLA. I uh, graduated. I in went to graduate school. Actually, into graduate school as well, and, and was a film major, film major and animation major. But I was always interested in, in uh, education. And so I, even at UC, UCLA, I made educational films. They all won awards. Uh, I made, you know, a couple on geology, another on physics, another a math and one on measurement. And um, then from there, I did a little bit of uh, commercial work. And then I got into broadcast graphics, where I, Kind of specialized in news. I liked information. I get like portraying information, and I actually won two Emmys, national Emmys, for my work on CBS News. And then from there, I worked on branding television stations around the world. I worked at 25 different countries, um, and again, focusing on news. The um, I taught seniors at the Otis College of Art Design for 10 years. I uh, actually helped write and art direct 74 of the lessons that are in the Elevated Math program. Uh, there are all the pre-algebra videos and is a year's course. And then when the iPad came out, I was able to get the rights and I converted these lessons to use on the iPad. Those lessons plus 99 algebra lessons, which are just as good or better than the pre-algebra ones. And so they would work on the iPad and were more, and my motivation was so they could be more accessible to parents and to students. And I could bring the price down. And originally the price for, they were all on DVDs and sold to schools and the schools would pay from somewhere like 3,000 to $4,000 for everything. I was able to bring it all down to like $200. And now they, um, I took a break from it. I was having a trouble with the iPads because Apple kept 
updating their uh, iOS system, I had to update all my iPad apps, and it was just too expensive. So um, I sort of let it go because I got elected on a school board, and and then I served for four years on the school board, and and during this time I also taught. I taught uh, at the continuation school, taught uh, art. So I got a real sense of what teaching was all about. And then I uh, just when the um, coronavirus hit and the and the pandemic, um, I used that time to convert the 173 math lessons I had, plus the 35 career videos and the 1,000 plus instructor notes and workshops to the internet so that anybody with any, any kind of device, whether it's a iPhone, iPad, uh, any other tablet, laptop, uh, can, can access them. And uh, this just got launched a couple, few weeks ago. Um, we, I'm right now busy just trying to let people know about it. Um, I was able to put a price tag of uh, $4.99 a month for everything, which uh, I, think is, I think is reasonable. I don't think, I'm not here to do, make money. It's there, it's really, I want to help parents and students. My motivation is to create better problem solvers for the world, because I feel like the world needs more problem solver, solvers. So anyway, that's my background. I also wrote a YA novel. Uh, uh, and let's see, what else? I, um, I have two daughters. They both graduated from college, and they now have a good job. But they were a great source of learning how to teach, because I ended up sort of home teaching them as well as them going to the public and private school. But I did get them into good colleges. So anyway. <laughs> That's, uh, that's amazing. And I think it uh, just, you know, when I first reach out to you, um, you know, I, I was a full time online parent and many of the folks in this group uh, have done full time online learning or traditional homeschooling. And then we have a population of parents who are doing remote learning due to the pandemic. And what jumped out to me is, you know, over the years, uh, you know, my student did online learning through elementary, middle, high school, then at the community college level, then at the, now at the college level. And so I've watched a lot of online content, a lot of tutorials, a lot of videos um, since like the dawn of online education. And so I've seen where it's been and kind of, you know, the potential of what it could be. And your video, just the one that I saw when I first visited the website, I was like, you know, this is really good because I've seen a lot. And so I can kind of evaluate. I know when I've seen a clunker and one that's gonna bore a student um, or confuse a parent, um, but the animations were great. And of course, now I know you had all this experience behind you and you work with really uh, talented, experienced folks to bring in, you know, to connect kind of the entertainment piece of it, the hook, um, and then the actual practical, um, you know, the learning piece of it. And so I, I thought it was wonderful. Yeah, I th thank you. I think, I think it's important that kids, students enjoy learning. Yeah, they, they they learn better if they learn enjoying it. They don't. It's not something they have to do, and so it was important that we made these lessons not only informative but entertaining. Yeah, you'll and see, they see really it. are. They're the, like I said, it's a hook. At the beginning of your videos, you you know, there's something there that kind of gets the kids' attention, um, and also gives them an idea about what they're gonna do in this lesson uh, in, in a fun and interesting way. Well, let's, um, let's not waste any more time. Why don't we uh, dive in? Lewis is going to kind of walk us through um, the, the website and show us a little bit about uh, what Elevated Math does and provides to students and, and parents. 
Okay, why don't I sh share my screen so you can see the website. Sure. So, um, okay, there it is. see it? Yep. Okay, so this is the website. It's a very easy uh, domain name, elevatedmath.com. And you know, the top you have a about, which if we won't, I won't bore you now with it, but it sort of gives you this sort of the history, more in depth history of the uh, program. Um, that, that's me over here on the right in the picture. And that's the, see, I'm not a math person, but the, um, but you know, the project director was Dr. Uh, Mary Scott Glasgow, who was an excellent teacher. She taught teachers to teach math. And so she was the one who helped, and she put together like 20 uh, other writers and teachers and editors to put, the, you know, to make these uh, scripts for this. And then it was my job to turn them into some visual, make them visual so they kids could learn through the animations. So, um, so anyway, we we'll go back to home, and there's the. Um, I think I'll go right into the. Well, over to the right, this is pretty heavy, is, uh, is the scope and sequence, which tells you everything about every lesson. Uh, it, I'm, not, I'm not even going to open it up, but anyone going to the site can, and they can see what's involved. It's pretty involved. It's very, it's very thorough. I'll, I'll yeah. say that. Yeah. But I'll open up a math lesson, and I think I'll go to a math lesson that uh, uh, Tilly, you could not see. Um, <laughs> so it'll be something new. It's okay. one of my favorites, and I have a couple points I can make here. It's um, it's the one on subtracting integers. So when you go into the uh, into this, this I call this the video page, and you can see up in the top right is the glossary where you can you know search a word if you need to, um, and below that are the um, student materials and the teacher materials. Uh, one of the most important uh, things here is the teacher notes. So if you go to the teacher notes, you have, um, you know, everything a teacher or instructor might need to help a student with this lesson. But something I think is re really important to keep in mind and that is, this program is full of stuff, and you don't need to use everything. I, we put in everything that you could possibly use, but you don't even need to. If you, if you don't have, if a parent doesn't have time to study the teacher notes and help work with the student, just have the student watch the video because the video is stands on its own. But the if the parent can get involved it shows the parent how he or she can work with the student and gives the tools for the parent. So I think that's, um, there's a lot of reasons why I think that this is important for the, um, for the learning, for the, it's really important for the student to know that the parent cares. So the parent, yeah. if, the, if the student sees the parent is working, it, you know, and striving to help him or her learn, then the student will know that learning is important, the school is important, this lesson's important. So anyway, um, let's start the lesson, I'll take you through it. Now what's, uh, why I like this lesson is I also wanted to point out something, oops, let me go back to the beginning. It starts right away, so, so we will, uh, we're gonna pause here for a second. Um, and I, over on the right is the, you can see the um, sort of chapters. Uh, we start with a cartoon intro, then there's instruction, then there's lesson notes where the student, you know, I'll take, show you how that works, more, more uh, practices, then more instruction, more lesson notes, more, more instruction, and then and finally there's a conclusion and then a cartoon wrap up. And then there's challenge problems at the end. So if a student, maybe maybe a 
maybe a parent has twins. <laughs> One's a little more advanced than the other. You can, the parent can work with the one student on some of the uh, lesson notes or the uh, practice sets and let the other student work on the challenge sets. So, um, but the other thing I wanted to point out is in this particular lesson, we show a number of ways of subtracting integers. There is no right way of learning. You can learn, but, we, but every student learns a different way. Uh, some students learn by audio or by uh, visual or by uh, really working with the problem. And so we have a different way, different ways of um, teaching subtracting integers. We, we first use counters, and then we use the number lines, and then we use rules. So if, if you know your student and know that, yeah, he's just going to want the rules, Forget about the other. Just go to the rules. Don't white bore him with the counters or the number lines. But some students may, may need to see that visual uh, connection with the number line or the counters, and you can use those. So you have a lot of tools. You don't have to use them all, but they're there to use in case you need them. So let me show you. We start, we start each lesson with a cartoon. And the cartoon is there for a number of reasons. One is that it introduces it. The second thing is that it introduces the characters because unlike a um, program like uh, Khan Academy where you have one voice teaching, our teaching is done through conversation. So you, re you introduce, or you're introduced to the characters. The pre-algebra have different characters than the algebra ones, but you are introduced to the characters here with this particular lesson. The cartoon also relaxes the student. So many students are, when you say math, they get tight. They, they're scared of math. And this sort of relaxes them so they are a little bit more relaxed going into the lesson. Adults may not like these, some of these uh, cartoons, um, but the students, believe me, love them. And, um, and I haven't read, met one student who doesn't like it. The only exception is if you get into the into the high school, not tenth grade, maybe the students don't want to say that they enjoy. Well, it. <laughs> they're too cool. They're too cool, and they don't like yeah. anything. So, right. <laughs> okay. So let me play this. Let me play this cartoon for you. Boy, I've been waiting for this all week. Yeah, me too. I love robot competitions. My favorite bot, Dax Power, gained more than any of them. What planet are you on? No way! Moose Ninja went forward 10 meters, back 4, forward 12 meters, back 3, then across, and then pushed Dax Power out of bounds when he went forward 7 meters more. That doesn't mean he gained more ground than Dax. As we forward 15, back 8, forward 11, back 2, and then forward 5. Mr. 2, I'm so glad you're here. You can settle this. Which bot gained more ground last match? We can figure all that out using integer subtraction and addition. Okay, now I want to point out one thing here. We do talk, we have what's unique about this program, and, and I, I don't know any other device that can do it, but we can pause this, these internet videos, build in pauses. And the pauses are there for the instructor to regroup, the, the student to go get a snack before he starts the lesson. Um, it, it's take, just there. Taking so, notes. To take no, oh, let me get my notes. notes. The, the instructor could say, or the parent could say, you have your notebook. Oh, yeah, yeah, here it is. If they get it. Anyway, just get ready for it. So then, then we go right in there so you can start the um, video. Now that we're back in class, we can figure out which bot gained the most ground last week. But we need to understand how to subtract integers to do that. Okay. We'll first explore subtracting integers using counters. Let's start with the problem negative 6 minus negative 4. Let me point out one thing. I'm starting in the middle of a module. So the students have already learned about counters and how to 
add with counting. So now they're going to learn how to to do um, subtract with them. So it, it, this is not totally uh, new to someone who's been working with this program. Mr. Two, do we put the counters on the workspace like we did in addition? Good question, Luria. Yes, we do. Look at the first number or the menu end. That number tells us how many and what kind of counters to put on the workspace. Since the number is negative six, we put on six red counters. Because we're subtracting, we remove counters. Our subtrahend, or second number, is negative four. So we remove four negative counters. There are two red counters left. So negative six minus negative four equals negative two. That's right. Okay. So there's now another pause. So the parent instructor can say, is that clear? Or if the student's doing it himself or herself, you know, they can look at this and go, okay, that, that makes sense. If they make sure it, it connects. And then they can press, press the play button again to continue. Try subtracting three from two, Zio. Start with two yellow positive counters. Subtract or take away three positive counters. But we only have two positive counters. Can we use zero pairs to subtract, Mr. Two? Yes, you can, Zio. So let's use a zero pair. Adding a zero pair doesn't change the value, but it allows us to take away three positive counters. Now what's left? One negative counter. So. 2 minus 3 equals negative 1. Okay, I, so, um, so let me, let me let's just go back. So well, what, I'll just say what I love about the pauses is if you have a student who has a learning difference or just, you know, they have a hard time taking notes. Uh, and knowing like what's important to write down or when they should be taking notes, those natural pauses that you've worked into the lesson are really going to serve those students well because they're going to know, okay, that was important information and now I need to write it down. Um, and if they've got a nice visual to, to work with, um, I, I think that's great. Yeah. The, the program has been shown, I, I, it was so clear to me, both when it was a DVD and also with um, the uh, iPad, it works really well for both gifted learners as well as challenged learners. Because a gifted learner, if they know it, they can skip ahead. Uh, they don't have to listen to the explanation of the answer. They, if they know the answer, they skip to the end to make sure that they understand, they got the right answer. So it doesn't, it doesn't, they don't feel bored and slow down. The challenged learner, the one and I, who is, might, you know, could be a, someone who's 10, 10 years old working with this and needs a little bit more time, or maybe someone who is a little bit challenged right now. I don't believe in, I think everyone, all kids are equal, but I think that the, someone who needs a little bit more time they can go back and, and scroll back and let, play it again. Scroll back and play it again. They don't have to be embarrassed by raising their hand and you know, say, I don't understand, or just be, or not, or not say they don't understand and, and, not, and not get it and be left behind. So it works for both, um, for both challenge and uh, gifted learners. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Oh. And, and you also provide guided notes in the lessons? Right. Let me, let me show you, uh, I'll show you a, um, I'm going to share the screen again here. Um. While you're doing that, I'll just say, uh, so uh, Amy Valentine, who has a lot of experience with online education, um, she's excited about this math in the real, real world piece. Um, and then uh, Lori Cooney, who is a longtime online parent, 
and uh, online education advocate. She, she said this is a great visual audio tool. So uh, you're getting uh, some good feedback from uh, online practitioners. Good. Um, so let me, I'll go on the chapter, I will go ahead to the uh, lesson notes. Um, and so if you, if I click on the lesson notes, I go Start right to the first one. three line. negative counters. So I need to subtract one. This actually should have started it just a hair earlier. On one of your lesson notes, okay. use counters to subtract one from negative three. Start with three negative counters. I need to subtract one. But because I don't have any positive counters, I add one zero pair. Now I take away one positive counter. I have four negative counters left. So, negative three minus one is negative four. Good job, Eddie. Okay, so there's a pause there to, to make sure that the student understands. Uh, and then you continue the next, to the next uh, problem. In problem two of your lesson notes, use counters to calculate four minus negative two. And as you notice, it pauses again. This allows the student to take his lesson note and work it out. And he can work it out and, and work out an answer. And then can press the uh, play button. Start with four positive counters. Add two zero pairs. Take away two negative counters. 4 minus negative 2 equals 6. That means subtracting a negative minus a minus is like adding a positive. Subtracting a negative 2 is the same as adding 2. Way to go, Luria. Okay, so let me go back. I, I just want to show you the... Um, we have a conclusion, but I'll show you the cartoon wrap-up, which is sort of fun. I think you're ready to answer your question now, Trillian. Use integer subtraction to find out Dax's total gain. Okay. He went forward 15, back 8, forward 11, back 2, then forward 5. Use your rules. To subtract an integer, add its opposite. Then, follow the rules for adding integers. That means I start with 15, add negative 8, add 11, add negative 2, then add 5. That's 21. See, I told you, Zio. Wait a minute, Trillian. Let Zio calculate what Moose gained. Moose went forward 10 meters, so I add 10. Back 4, so I subtract 4. Then I add 12, subtract 3, and add 7. I change subtraction to addition and add the opposites, which equals 22. See, I knew I was right. Moose Ninja did gain more. Well, only by one, but okay, you were right. That's being a good sport, Trillian. Okay, so pause here for the student to go in and check it if they want to, to see you know, if they can get the 22 meters as well. They should after watching the lesson. And then, then we have one more little piece, which I like. That game was terrific. Moose won again. How'd you like that, Eddie? Uh, I thought everything was delicious. <laughs> How about you, Trillian? Trillian? Where's Trillian? She went down to the field to meet her hero. I don't believe it. Cute. So, um, so this is geared towards, you've got the pre-algebra piece, the algebra piece. Um, so into high school. And then I know you have some kind of ACT, SAT kind of prep. Um, you guys have kind of figured out like what are the common questions or concepts from those tests and what students need to concentrate on? Right. We, um, I, 
there's a couple really good uh, tutors for here in Los Angeles for SAT and and, um, and ACT, and I showed him the, uh, the all the lessons. He went through them and picked the ones which he thought were really important for students who were studying for the ACT or or the uh, SAT should watch. Um, so we listed those. Um, I'll show you that. Um, so from the home page, if you go down, oops, sorry. If you go down to the bottom here, you see at the bottom here the SAT, ACT. Uh oh. Okay, I have to figure this out. Sorry. <laughs> we, we lost your screen. Um, <laughs> okay. But, but I, I, I think that's great for parents to know that they can utilize elevated math to do some of that prep um, for those big tests that are really important to students um, as they're getting ready for college application season, which will be here uh, before we know it. Right. Okay, well, the, um, I'd love to show you, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I love, one of my favorite cartoons, can I show it to you? Sure, yeah, let's see it. This way, this way you see the algebra characters. Um, so I will, first let me share the screen. Okay. And, okay, now go into math lessons. And then I'll go down to the, it's, on, it's in linear equations for of one variable. And it's 10.3. Whoops, no, 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 no. Sorry. I am so sorry. Yeah, uh, you're good. You're good. Okay, uh, here we go. It's actually two variables we need. And so it's, we're looking at solving uh, lessons of two variables. And this is the cartoon intro for that. She came up to me and she had this worried look on her face. Flying. Yeah, that's it. Her name was Ms. Flygel. She said she had a problem that she needed help with. Something big, I assumed. Actually, she had two problems, two linear equations, and she wanted to solve them both. So I says to her, have you tried anything, sister? She just looked at me with all those puppy dog eyes. So I took the job. Right off, I noticed something, something that only a trained eye could spot. Both equations had something in common. Yeah, they were both equal to y. It took a great detective like me to figure that out. So if they both equal the same thing, then that means that they are equal to each other. Go ahead, check your rules if you don't believe me. Now the pieces were falling together. Now I had one problem with one variable. I've seen this before. I did it made something out of nothing. It's all about finding the common thread. Not bad for a gumshoe who's walked a lot of miles on the mean streets of algebra. Teachers are so strange. Anyway. <laughs> a little film noir there for, yeah. you, for your I, students. I like it. The people doing the uh, cartoons had such a good time making these things. <laughs> they're, they're really good at it. So that was great. That was great. So um, tell me if a parent today says, okay, my kid needs this, they need help. Um, about how long would a typical student take to work through, um, you know, pre algebra or the algebra lessons? Like, is it going to take them all school year or, or what does that look like? Well, it really depends on the student and their age. Um, we roughly figure about an hour per lesson. 
to watch it, to work the problems, to really understand it. I don't recommend spending more than an hour on it. Uh, an hour a day is, would be good. If you work uh, an hour a day, I think I had it five days a week, I think you get it, go through both all the pre-algebra and the algebra lessons in 35 weeks. So that's like two years of algebra, two years of math in less than a year. Um, if you, and it's not, it, it can be done. I talked to a teacher in Arizona who told me that her class, you know, her class last year, uh, basically skipped a grade this year in math because she was able to do all, you know, all those many lessons. So I wouldn't worry. I mean, if, if for parents uh, listening to this, I wouldn't worry too much about you know getting getting behind because of the pandemic. You can easily catch up, or you can get ahead. And the what I like about these lessons is it prepares the student for more advanced math classes. It's um, and I actually go right on not only advanced math classes, but prepares and gives them the tools for the SAT, ACT to get into the colleges, and it'll take them right through. So, um, well, I, I think that's encouraging to hear because I think a lot of parents are really concerned. You know, we hear about summer learning loss just every year when kids are out of school, but we're now we're talking about this COVID learning loss where kids have been out of the classroom uh, for a long time and parents are really worried about how their kids are going to be on the other side of this and i right. think knowing that they could access a pro uh, you know a program like elevated math uh during this um where they could compensate and and make up some time or you know if you have a kid who's doing really well uh, let them go, let them, you know, explore and, and, and take on some new content, which I think is exciting. Can you talk a little bit about, because what I also love are, are those career videos where you guys have really done a great job at uh, making the connection between what's happening in the classroom, in, in your, your algebra lesson, and to how that's applied in out in the world in in the career field, can you can you talk a little bit about those? Sure. Um, let me let, let me uh, share the screen again, if you don't mind. Sure. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Where am I? Okay. I have to get back to the home page, and then. So we're on the home page, and just to point out, we do have a sem sample lesson here, full sample lesson that you can try out. This is a um, an algebra lesson, uh, and again, keep in mind that a student is going to be working through these, so you may not understand it. But I think this is a lesson that most parents can understand as well. Um, so you, I put something in here that we all can learn from, and then over on the right are the career film samples. And I'll, let me open this one up. It's the, this is the one I think, uh, Tilly, you saw. Yeah. But since you already saw it, um, I'll show you another one. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. the, the first ones are for the pre-algebra. And what they do, the pre-algebra ones actually have uh, worksheets for students and the teacher worksheet. Again, it's not necessary to do them, but you, um, we're giving you more than you can ever need to teach these lessons. And it might be something that it's also to keep the, you know, for an instructor in school, it keep, keeps them trying new things and, and we give them a lot of things to try. Um, so the first part here is the pre-algebra and each one connects with a particular module. The video, the algebra ones don't. They, they are all are, you know, reflecting on uh, how these different people use 
algebra from a filmmaker to a um, wind engineer to the zookeeper to a video game designer. But the one I want to show you is the chocolatier. And this one connects with the measurement uh, lessons we have. And I think I haven't found anyone who doesn't like chocolate, so I thought this would be <laughs> fun to watch. So here we go. My name is Susie Nora Sepstein. I have a small artisan chocolate business, which means all the chocolates are handmade, all the flavors are custom designed, all the shapes are, are unique and intricate, and there's an artistic uh, aspect to it. It's very subtle, but math affects everything we do. If you don't do the math correctly, it won't taste good, it won't look good. Usually if you mess up your math, you'll have a, a texture problem. Your consistency will be off. All chocolate starts with the beans. And what happens is these beans are roasted and fermented and dried and hulled, and they turn into something like this. These are called cocoa nibs. The cocoa nibs are brown and heated some more, they turn into a substance called cocoa liquor. Cocoa liquor is what makes the difference between milk chocolate and dark chocolate. It's all about the percentages. So if we have milk chocolate, the cocoa liquor content is 40%. 40% is the high percentage for milk chocolate. And dark chocolate, 72%. If you have 72% cocoa liquor, that's a lot of chocolate. It's going to taste dark. It's going to taste earthy. It's going to taste much richer, much less sweet. Sugar. In milk chocolate, we have 45%, and in dark chocolate, 25%, a lot less. In milk chocolate, we have 10% milk powder and no milk powder in dark chocolate. And finally, these chocolates both have a bit of emulsifiers. In the case of milk chocolate, it's about 5%, and in the case of dark chocolate, about 3%. One of the reasons I think people love chocolate is the combination of the fat and sugar. The way we make candies out of chocolate is first to melt the chocolate, temper it to control the crystallization of those fat particles so they align properly and will stay in a mold. And we then let that set and then we talk about flavor. Then what do we want to put in that chocolate? Do we want to put a lot of chocolate cream? Do we want it more caramel? Do we just make all these things? This is how we do the math when we temper the chocolate. We need two-thirds melted chocolate. About two-thirds. About a third. And one-third of the seeds. That is a two-to-one ratio. We call this the seeding method. Once I get this all heated up to 115, I'm going to use these to cool it down. It's basically like putting ice cubes in a drink. In our case, we're going to start with 36 ounces of chocolate. That means we'll need 24 to melt and 12 to pack the seeds. Total, 36 ounces. Now that I use that, I'm proud that I can do it. And I feel like I can really apply stuff that might not have made sense when I was in middle school. Now I get it. Now I get why I had to do your math well, you can make a lot of people happy. <laughs> so not only is math cool, it's also delicious. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, and I mean, how many times as parents or teachers do we hear kids say, when am I ever going to use this? Um, those videos uh, are amazing. And I think we'll open their eyes because you, you know, there's such a wide variety of interesting, different career fields that you guys have, you know, tapped into. Um, that I think kids will think about math a little bit differently because it's going to open the doors to, you know, careers that are interesting and exciting to them, like video game design and filmmaking and those kinds of things that you don't necessarily think are, you know, it's not engineering or something like that. It's something kind of creative, but you still need that math uh, background. So um, kudos to you for for making that connection and making it fun for, for kids. 
Sure. Thank you. Yeah. yeah it's, been, it's been fun. It's been, um, you know, it's, I'm still on the roller coaster ride with this thing. Um, but, uh, the, you know, I hope, you know, I do hope um, we get more and better problem solvers for the world out there. So that's well, what I was going to <laughs> I, I think your your heart is in the right place as a, a, a creator and a dad and a former school board member and somebody who obviously cares about, you know, developing a culture of learning, um, which I think is wonderful and we need more of. Uh, we're, we're running out of time here, but uh, I wanted to thank you. Is there anything else parents need to know? um to to access elevated math i just it's just really important to know that every student is different every student is an individual when i taught at otis every class was totally different with different students and you have to approach it that way some may not want to be have your involvement some want the involvement some don't pretend they don't want your involvement um, I know with my dad, um, my dad was an electrical so he, he understood that and I would have a algebra problem I got, which I couldn't solve. I'd come and say, Dad, how, what's the answer? So he'd work out and give me the answer, but not show me how to do it. So now I had the answer. I could go back and figure it out. But that's how I like to learn. Um, every student learns a different way. I just try to, with the team that we had, give parents, teachers, all the tools that they could possibly want. I love to hear back from people how they used it and how, how it works with them. You can always make this better. So, but I appreciate you uh, having me here. It was, it was great. It's my pleasure and um, just thank you for everything that you're doing uh, from parents like me who have sat at the kitchen table and tried to help my, my, my child with their math homework and uh, sought out every resource that I could get, whether it was a book or a video tutorial, but a program like this, uh, like Elevated Math, uh, would have really saved me about 10 years ago, I, I can tell you that much. And for $4.99, which is like the cost of a cup of coffee at the coffee shop, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it, um, it, it's a great investment in your kids. And so, and really an investment in supporting uh, education. So, um, I, I hope parents will check it out and explore, and we'll post um, the website information in, in the thread in the comments here uh, for the people watching and for the parents that will watch this later. Um, but Lewis Hall, thank you again for joining us today on the Parent Exchange. And uh, come back if you guys add more videos or decide to take on geometry or some physics or whatever uh come back and, and we'll talk about it okay great thank you Terry, for having all right me. thanks so much pleasure. thanks so much and everybody we will see you next week here on the parent exchange thank you have a great weekend bye bye, -bye.